Crusader Kings 3 is an incredibly rewarding strategy game where you scheme, murder, and war your way to the top. But the lack of tutorials and explanations for important military tactics can be incredibly frustrating, especially when your 4k stack of elite units keeps losing to a 2000 unit army of some backwater tribe. In this video, I will be explaining all the intricate details about military expansion in Crusader Kings 3. The first thing you need to know about battles is the advantage modifier, which is the number that you see in the middle of the battle pop-up. Each point of this number modifies the damage done by your army by 2%. So if you have a plus 20 modifier, that means your army is doing 40% more damage than its base amount. So even though having a larger army is important in Crusader Kings, if you have a big enough modifier, you can win battles consistently against much larger armies. Hovering over the modifier will show you all the different factors affecting it, of which I will be talking about men-at-arms, defensive terrain, supply limits, and army commanders. So let's get started. First, let's talk about what everybody likes to rush in the beginning of their games, men-at-arms. When you start a new game in Crusader Kings 3, your army will only be comprised of levies and knights. A levy is essentially a peasant from your realm with a spear instead of a pitchfork. So getting proper fighting soldiers should almost always be your number one priority. Each military unit will have different stats, and the stats for men at arms are much higher than that of your levies, but we'll be talking about that in a little bit. You can see the stats for your levies in the military screen. Looking at these numbers, you can see there are four categories, damage, toughness, pursuit, and screen. And each of these is quite important in its own way. The damage of a unit affects how easily that unit will be able to knock other enemy units out of the battle by either killing them or routing them. The toughness a unit has determines how much damage the unit is capable of taking before they cannot fight anymore. This kid's definitely on crack right now. Yeah! Yeah! The next two stats only come into effect after the battle is already won or lost, during the aftermath phase. If you have won the battle, your units will have a free run at the enemies to do as much damage as possible, while not taking any damage themselves. The amount of damage they can do in this phase is represented by the pursuit stat only, not the damage stat. However, if you have lost the battle, the enemy will be taking a free run at your units, and the screen stat will determine how much damage you can block from happening to your army. Knowing how these four stats play into your units during battle, you can now make a better decision regards to choosing how to spend your gold or prestige on men-at-arms. If you are simply looking for the most cost-effective army, building bowmen is your best bet. From a cost-to-damage analysis, they get you 0.45 damage for every gold you spend, which makes them very efficient. Although they output a lot of damage, they are a bit squishy as they only have 10 toughness so it's best to pair them with a tougher unit like a pikeman. And in general, it's best to have a mixed army composition as it will be harder to counter. As a final note, I just wanted to mention some stats behind damage and pursuit. During the main battle phase, one point of the damage stat accounts for 0.03 damage done in the battle. But in the aftermath phase, each point of the pursuit stat deals 0.33 damage to retreating units. This is an increase of more than 10 times. So when you have a bit of extra gold, buying cavalry units, which have a high pursuit stat, can really help increase the amount of enemy units you kill in battles. Even though you know how battles work and how your units are contributing to these battles, you might still get into situations where you're losing battles even when you have more levies and more men-at-arms than your opponent. This is because the terrain where you fight is incredibly important to the battle. The following terrain tips can help when attacking to avoid defeats to lesser armies or when you're defending against a much larger invader. Now, 
There are actually three aspects that go into the terrain modifier of a battle. The first one we will talk about is the terrain itself. Whenever you click on a tile, you can see its dominant terrain here. Each different type of terrain has a different modifier to the defender which can be found on the wiki here. But what you need to know is that mountains offer the best defensive terrain, followed by jungle, hills, wetlands, and forests. So if you see the enemy army camping out some mountains waiting for you to attack them, it might be best to go siege a castle and wait for them to come to you. Another aspect of terrain you should watch out for are defensive bonuses based on defending straits and rivers. Defending across a strait will net the defender an extra 30 bonus to the battle modifier. A large river will add 20 and a small river 10, so these are huge bonuses that can swing the tide in a tight battle. Finally, watch out for castles when attacking or defending. Certain buildings can add bonuses for defenders who are standing inside them. They can be used to your advantage by upgrading certain castles around your realm to act as defensive holding points where, you're, where you will know you'll have huge defense against attackers. Another aspect of running your army smoothly is being aware of their supply limit. Whenever you raise a new army, it starts out with a full 100 supplies. Keeping this number near 100 will help you avoid some nasty penalties you get for running on low supplies. You'll get a minus 10 battle modifier for running low on supplies and a minus 25 modifier for a starving army, as well as an attrition of 1% of your army. To see how many soldiers a tile can support, you can just hover over the tile itself. This will bring up the supply limit. To stop your units from losing supply, you want to try to keep the number of soldiers in your army below the supply limit number of the terrains you'll be spending a lot of time in. Sometimes losing supplies can't be helped, as you're stuck in enemy territory far from your realm. I love the smell of napalm in the morning. If you're stuck at zero supplies and you're far from home, you can always take a county with a large enough supply limit for your army and then sit in that county until you regenerate your supplies. This is a very helpful tip because running into battles with an army, losing units each month from a lack of supplies and having a minus 25 advantage modifier to the battle is a recipe for heavy losses. Another quick change you can make that will improve your armies is being aware of the commander you have in charge. As you can see here, the commander's martial skill directly plays into the advantage modifier of a battle. So having commanders with a large martial ability will give you a leg up in tight battles. But another thing to look out for are commander traits. Commanders can have a variety of different traits that can turn battles from losses to wins if used properly. There are traits that give your armies huge bonuses depending on the terrain they are fighting in, and even some that take away penalties for crossing bodies of water. Another useful trait to look out for is the Military Engineer trait, which lowers the time it takes to siege a holding by 30%. This is especially useful when you split your armies into one fighting force and then have another smaller army which just has levies and siege weapons. Commanders are automatically chosen to be the person with the highest martial skill in your court. So before entering a battle, see if there's a lower skilled commander that may have a more useful trait for your situation. So those are all the tips I have to help you guys grow and expand your realm through military conquest. If you found them helpful and enjoyed the video, please do drop a tactical nuke on that subscribe button. And let me know if there are any other aspects of Crusader Kings 3 you want me to explain. Thanks for watching.